the 26th of May, the year 2023, a day that we're here to inform you on what's happening in the country and beyond. Some of the news making headlines tonight is that Ruto and his deputy were in Embo, where they launched the Embo Expo to be running for the next four days, even as we look forward to celebrating a national celebration in Embo County come next week. I'm talking about Madaraka, which will be celebrated in Embo County. Other stories is that there have been changes in the defense forces that we're going to be informing you in this particular place as far as KDF is concerned. A few appointments and a few changes that have been done to make sure that the system continues to run. This and more in this particular bulletin, but first let's get a proper introduction so we dive right in. Moses Gitonga joins us as a sign language interpreter for tonight. And as your anchor, I am Motegi K. Martin. Let's get started. President William Ruto has criticized Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA, for low tax revenue collection, terming their performance as a hindrance in revenue collection. The head of state stated that corruption, tax evasion, and unwillingness to upgrade progressing systems were some ills that were played boldness in tax collection and there is no man no leader and certainly no obstacles that will slow him down and today he just demonstrated that at a time when the state of our national finances is not good especially in the context of the radical measures that must be undertaken urgently to transform the country and the economy kra has remained lackluster in performance. If we ask Kenyans to step forward and name the people who normally facilitate them not to pay tax, and name the people who normally facilitate them not to pay tax, I don't know how many members of staff will remain in carry. The head of state said taxes paid by citizens finance projects in the country. He encouraged everyone to follow suit and file their tax returns as required by the law. The move is in bid to rally Kenyans to file their tax returns. Ruto's move to increase taxes through proposed finance bill of 2023 has rubbed others the wrong shoulders. Federation of Kenya Employers and a section of religious leaders are among those opposing the proposed bill. Also beamed into the heart of discussion is the opposition led by their party leader Raila Odinga. <laughs> The president has, however, reiterated his commitment to restoring public confidence in the government by ensuring effectiveness, efficiency, transparency, and accountability in the use of public funds. Auma Evans for KUTV, Nairobi. In other news, President William Ruto today took his promissorial campaign to Embu County. Ruto and his deputy, Rigadi Gashagwa, spoke at the opening of the Embu Expo, which will go on for the next four days ahead of Madaraka Day celebrations in <coughs> Embu County on Thursday next week. Thereafter, the president took a stroll through Embu, lobbying for among many of his agenda, the housing plan. And this is the Embu County Another day, another promise. President William Ruto today took the opportunity at the Embu Expo to loud his plan for his amazing and hustlers aboard. Accompanied by his deputy Rigadi Gashagwa, Ruto promised jobs and government support to the youth, Wi-Fi connectivity, market structures, among other promises. Mwananchi wa kawaida mtoto wake apate nafasi ya ajira. Ndiyo pia ajisimamie. Ndiyo pia achunge familia yake. President Ruto also sees the opportunity to go around Embu town, lobbying support for his housing plan. Ruto glorified the plan as an omnibus to arrest poor housing as well as joblessness. Hapa Embu tunajenga nyumba elfu tano kwa mapenzi ya mungu. Tunaanza hapa na nyumba miyamoja naenda kwanzisha saizi. Sawa sawa. 
na huyu gavana wenu ametupatia ardhi mahali tutajenga hizo manyumba na tuende kujenga nyumba mbali tunajenga karibu na mji ili hata mwananchi wa kawaida na hiyo nyumba itakuwa affordable housing the president and his deputy did not shy from politics deputy president regard gashagwa slammed on the opposition once again disclaiming any possibility of a handshake this comes after Azimio's exodus from bipartisan talks on Wednesday. Kwa hivyo sisi tunasema asante. Tumuunge rais wetu mkono. Na mnajua ile jamaa ya maandamano ameanza kusubua huyu rais. Ati anasema ati anataka ati kuwe na handshake. Mnaweza kubali? Mnaweza kubali? Ruto's visit to Wembo today heralds a week long business holiday after the government extended national commemorations to a week rather than just one day as it stands munene weru ku tv now interior cabinet secretary kithure kindiki has appeared before senators to inform lawmakers on the progress of investigation into the shakahola deaths in kilifi county Kindiki stated that 241 bodies have so far been exhumed from shallow, gr shallow graves, I beg your pardon, in the forest since the cult came to light on April 14th. Kindiki also termed Mackenzie as a terrorist who was deliberate in what he was doing. Interior Cabinet Secretary Kidure Kindiki appeared before the Senate Committee today to shed light on the Shakahola deaths in Kilifi County. Kindiki says that 241 bodies have so far been exhumed from shallow graves in the forest since the horrific cultic occurrences came to light. Autopsies conducted on the first 112 bodies showed that most of the victims had died of starvation. The cabinet secretary further told senators that most victims died of starvation, but a good number died of injuries inflicted on them by blunt objects or lack of oxygen. So far, the post-mortem examination of the bodies we have recovered so far um, revealed that many of the victims died of starvation but a lot more also died through asphyxiation asphyxiation is the lack of oxygen some were strangled by bare hands others were strangled using wires and other apparatus and others were hit with blunt objects. Kindiki further said that Mackenzie hired armed criminals to supervise the followers who were starving and that in the event where somebody would change their mind, they would be hit by a blunt object or strangled to death by the supervisors. Furthermore, those who changed their minds and wanted to be set free were killed by armed criminals who were supervising the starvation. Some of Mr. Mackenzie's victims, some of them would change their mind along the way. What did he do? He had employed vicious armed men, armed with crude weapons, who would supervise the starvation to death and would hang around the families, because most of, most of the first things were in families, living in a temporary structure, and the scouts would supervise the starvation. And in the event, somebody would change their mind. They would be killed using blunt objects. The CS termed Mackenzie as a terrorist who was deliberate in whatever he was doing as he avoided the use of technology and a lot of the money he had conned people was handed in as cash. He further expressed confidence that all bodies will be recovered and that those still alive will be rescued. Jackie Nasiran, KUTV. Now, in an unfortunate incident, four people were shot dead on Thursday evening in Migori County during a daring invasion of Isabanya police station by armed goons. 
According to police report regarding the 6.30 p.m. incident, a rowdy mob driving in a pickup car arrived at the police station escorting the body of a man that was being moved from police uh, from St. Akideva Mabera Hospital Mortuary. Four people have been shot dead in Migori County after a group of individuals armed with machetes and stones launched an attack on the Isibenia police station yesterday. According to police report, the incident took place on Thursday evening at around 6.30 p.m. when a rowdy mob arrived at the police station in a pickup truck escorting the body of a deceased person being ferried by the police from St. Akidiva Mabera Hospital Mochari. Upon reaching the station, the assailants unleashed a wave of violence using machetes and stones which were loaded in the pickup truck, destroying the gates of cells as they demand for the release of all prisoners in custody. The escalating situation forced the police to respond with live ammunition, leaving four dead. According to the police report, the attack was a premeditated act with three suspects already identified as Peter Hamisi Chacha, John Musa, Nsato Alias Manuele, who is reported to have been driving the pickup. Police were forced to disperse the defiant mob using tear gas and fire blanks during the incident which left one police officer who was guarding the armory sustained injuries on the right eye and other body parts inflicted by the mob. The bodies of suspect gunned down were moved to St. Akidiva Mabera Hostel Mochari. Patrick Udwar, KUTV. Now, President William Ruto has made fresh changes at the Kenya Defense Forces, KDF, including promotions, postings, and appointments. In a statement issued on Friday by the Director of Public Communications in the Ministry of Defense, Bogita Ongeri, he said the changes were made following a recommendation of the Defense Council. On the list of those promoted include Brigadier Dennis Nyaga and Joe Kamori, who has been promoted to Major General and appointed Managing Director of Kenya Ordnance Factories Corporation. Brigadier Mohammed Noor Hassan has been promoted to Major General and appointed General Officer Commanding Border Security Command. Colonel Sylvester Kipkoril Chilchir has been promoted to Brigadier and appointed Deputy Director, Directorate of National Security Industries while Colonel Matthew Lilita Lenamunai was promoted to Brigadier and appointed Commander Kahawa Garrison, among others. The council is chaired by Defense CS Aden Dwale. Right, it's time for us to take our first short break right here on KTV Primetime News. If you check your calendar very well, we're still in the month of May, and May is for mental health. We still have a discussion here about mental health to make sure that we get to understand it fully. And as much time as we can give it, we shall do that tonight. I'll be joined by Claire Omolo, who is a consultant psychologist, to help us understand what exactly this is. We shall repeat it until it gets into our heads, because this is mental health. See you. Are you an aspiring media practitioner, a graduate, or you just want to advance your skills in television production? Then welcome to Kenyatta University, where education meets innovation. KUTV, the premier university television station in Kenya, is now offering short courses in TV studio, field technical operations, and video editing. Through these courses, you will acquire hands-on skills on camera operations, media production, lighting techniques, audiovisual editing, and sound and visual control and how to operate key equipment in modern TV control room. Enroll today at KUTV and discover your full potential in cutting-edge TV broadcasting. Graduates of these courses will receive professional certificates. For more information, visit our offices at KUTV Studios or call us on 020-870-4252 or 020 020-870-4252. 4255 or SMS us on 0739-110-544. KUTV, a new experience.
what are some of the ways through which you can develop these skills so that we are comfortably fitting into the job? You have to put yourself in positions where you are uncomfortable, uncomfortable in the sense that you are not clear about what to do. Because I used to work a corporate job before. So when I left, I happened to visit someone's farm around this area. So this project is called Security Breach Detector and Canis Familiarize. It is meant to be used to detect, detonate explosives. We tackle all the tough issues, discuss all the weird moments, and hopefully share a few laughs along the way. music group was releasing and the release was a, a success so when we are giving you that we also complement it up with any other thing that can that should and can complement that suit in accordance with the with the with the spectrums of the suit in question Afrika kwa kweli tuna mahitaji ambayo kiasuluhisha unaweza kuathiri watu kwenye bara hili bila uoga watu huwa na uzalishaji zaidi wanaja wana ujasiri wanakuwa wapimifu na wanakuwa wenye maarifa niliamua kuacha kazi hata kama sitafanikiwa nitakuwa nimejaribu nitakuwa na dio haiwezekani Hakuna kitu cha ajabu hapa. Kila na yapata ufanisi ufanya kazi usiku na mchana. Kitu kitakusukuma na kuwezesha kupata maarifa ambayo huko na Tunajaribu kutengeneza kitu kitakachopita mipaka nchi hii. Kiu unataka kubadilisha ulimwengu, anza na nyumbani. A loving husband and father. Nothing is too good for my daughter. An ambitious businessman with a dark secret. A girl with a whole life in front of her, plunging into a marriage that she did not choose with the wrong man. I'm not ready to marry Zero. But who is the right one? I love Nambi. A rock star living the dream. But the babes keep chasing me, I guess. Sir. It ain't easy being famous. Especially with so many glamorous women around. A woman hell bent on revenge. He will pay. Seductive. Dangerous. She is a predator. Everybody needs it. Everybody wants it. They will do anything to get it. Love and wealth. Technology. Science. Innovation. ICT and research. These are the ingredients upon which the solutions to the 21st century problems are founded. In a world that is rapidly changing, it's all hands on deck to ensure a balance in all fields of life. Women 
young and older also in the front line, breaking the glass ceiling, becoming thought leaders in the larger tech space. Not forgetting other societies marginalized. And when the tech Avengers come together, we inch closer to a much safer, efficient and sustainable world. What we view as a norm in today's advanced world was just an idea. And for nostalgic reasons, we trace back the iconic days to bring you the retro tech. On Technovation Show, we encapsulate all the pillars of the fourth industrial revolution, decoded in a language, all for one, one for all. Every Monday at 8.30 as we push the mantra, keep learning something new each and every day. Only on KUTV, a new experience. with a live transformational worship experience. And have our minds renewed by the word of God on the word segment. And not forgetting new music Zahi Wiki and in the Kwa Badona Wapatia Pale Wasani Wame Kwa Kiwa Kani. Make sure manzo me tune in because the quads na flow pia pale mixes kwa wingi yani the quads na come through and pia uh, performance yani uh, from our gospel artist up on gospel app from 7 to to 10 a.m. only on KUTV. Thank you for staying tuned to KUTV Primetime News. Before we went on a break, we said May is for mental health. And here at KUTV, we are particularly um, very careful and very intentional to discuss matters mental health. And for that reason, tonight we bring Claire Omolo, who is a consultant psychologist, to help us understand this mental health issue and how we can go around it and how we can actually be in a better place to make sure that we get to uh, you know be on the safe side as far as the illness is concerned the illness i'm talking about is mental illness and we shall be discussing this further allow me to make a few a few references to other diseases in the course of the conversation so we can compare and contrast and see how we can tackle mental illness which many people have actually taken for granted so claire omolo if you can hear me Welcome to this particular conversation. Thank you, Mutegi. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I can hear you clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Now, let's get straight into this conversation. And um, um, it's, this is not the first time we're talking about mental health in KUTV Kenya. We've done this in, in many settings, in many sittings, in many conversations. And the, 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 the first question I always ask for the sake of that one person, that might be joining and has not taken time to define for themselves to read or to get to hear someone like you speak what is mental health and what is mental illness from your perspective and as you answer that particular question it's important for us to also touch on now making a reference as i said i make a reference to a disease like cholera before you know you have cholera and you go for testing you will feel some pain in your stomach so how does one, as you do this particular introduction, how does one actually know that they have a mental illness so that they can seek further help? Okay, so let me begin by first defining what mental health is. 
So mental health is a state of well-being that affects how an individual feels, thinks, and even act. So when we talk about mental health, and is an individual able to cope with daily life challenges? Are they able to socialize? Can they cope with the normal life stresses to a point that they're able to overcome each and every situation in their life? As well, um, is an individual able to achieve their personal goal and also make contribution to the society? Basically, that is what mental health is. Um, so Mutegi, like we were discussing earlier, I wanted to tell you that when you wake up in the morning and you're able to brush your teeth, mm -hmm. shower, go to job, then it means that you're mentally well. But an illness comes in when an individual is not able to wake up to do even the slightest of activities. When an individual finds difficulty in washing utensils, going to work, and doing even um, the things that they enjoy doing. So if you're an artist, you don't feel like singing anymore. If, you're, um, if you draw, you don't feel like drawing anymore, then that is a problem. And let me just say this in three Ds. I call them three Ds. So if, if you feel that you're distressed, number one, distress is basically you feeling extremely anxious and feeling extreme pain. So that is what distress is. Another thing is dysfunctionality, which I've been able to talk about. Like you're not able to function properly. And people around you look at you and they see there's a problem. Then that is the another highlight to see that you have a mental illness. And the last one is danger. Are you posing danger to yourself and the people around you? And by danger, I mean that probably you're having suicidal thoughts, ideation, or you've even attempted suicide, or you're threatening to kill another person. So in that, we'll say that you surely have a mental illness, and you may need to talk to someone, a professional, about it for you to get care. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, especially for the three Ds. I think they're really helpful in understanding where a person stands as far as mental health illness is concerned. Now, um, you're, a, you're, you're a psychologist by profession, and the the term psychology is really brought into the conversations of mental health is what is the correlation between mental health and psychology is it a branch of psychology is it uh, uh, uh are they two topics that are they two different topics and as you answer that kindly also talk about psychiatrist what is what is the difference between a psychologist and a psychiatrist and who am i supposed to go to if i find myself in a situation where the three Ds are coming into play. Okay. So let me begin by saying that psychology is broad. Psychology is a study that deals with the mind in correlation to how an individual behaves. So you actually have to go to school to study psychology. Uh, when we talk about mental health, mental health, like I defined earlier, it is a state of well-being, just like physical health. But now we are talking about mental health that determines how an individual copes with life challenges. So mental health also um, tackles the mind. So that is where the correlation comes in that psychology talks about um, how we study the mind in correlation to the body, uh, a person's behavior, uh, sorry. But when you talk about mental health, um, what is your state of wellness? Yeah. And are you able to deal with these challenges, as I said earlier? Another question that you asked, what's the difference between a psychologist and psychiatrist? So psychologists offer what you call therapy, different therapeutic intervention to individuals um, going through a mental illness. And not only that, there are different branches of psychology that targets even marriage, um, family, there's family uh, psychology, among other things. But then psychiatrists, they've gone to school of medicine and specialized in psychiatry, and they prescribe medication. So the biggest difference between psychologists and psychiatrists is that psychiatrists are actually doctors specializing in mental health illnesses, and they offer medication, whereas as a psychologist, we offer what we call therapy. So who do you go to when you have a mental illness? 
psychologists and psychiatrists work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You see, like the individual's mind is it's broad, it's broad. And in as much as a doctor will offer medication, that alone is not sufficient for an individual to get well. So the doctor offers medication and me as a psychologist, I'll offer therapy in therapy. Uh, let's talk about individual therapy where I get to talk to you on a one-on-one -on -one basis, get to understand you more, even deeply, and spend time with you to get to understand where did this problem start or when did it start, and then try to change your behavior through what we call talk therapy. So I think that is the biggest distinction, but we work hand in hand. Yes. All right, thank you so much for putting and having that distinction between the terms that really confuse the general public. Now, um, I'm gonna make a reference again to uh, an illness that is not mental illness. Let's take, for example, one of the illnesses that have really troubled the nations of the world. I'm talking about malaria. Malaria comes in many forms or types. Influenza comes in many types. Are there types of mental illness? Or do we just have one type of mental illness? Maybe you can help us um, yeah. in shedding light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I remember you had also asked about how does someone know that they have a mental illness? I think I forgot to say that. So let me begin by saying that we have different types of mental illnesses. I think most people know of depression because uh, when COVID came, a lot of people used to say, you know, I'm depressed, I have a low mood. So depression is quite common. We have a manual for classifying mental illnesses that have basically classified these illnesses into mood disorders. So these mood disorders or mood illnesses, they're the ones that affect an individual's mood. And depression is an example, yeah? Depression is one of uh, the mood disorders. Uh, we have anxiety disorders. Like if you hear someone has panic attacks or uh, generalized anxiety illness, so that is another classification of um, mental illnesses. We have different phobias. You, you've heard of people who have these great fears towards things. Other people fear animals greatly. Other people fear insects, heights, water. So um, it's actually true that mental illnesses are classed differently. And for us to be able to understand what you're actually going through, then we need to take time to do an assessment like if you come to my clinic i'll have to sit down with you take time assess you thoroughly and also refer you to a psychiatrist so that you are actually able to know which illness you're suffering from and uh, you'd asked how does a, an individual know that they actually have a mental illness you'll you'll be able to know if you're someone who has a high level of self awareness you will definitely be able to know if something is wrong with you like if you loved dancing and you don't dance anymore mm. if you loved uh, socializing going out for events and you no longer feel like doing so if you have this great fear that when i step out of the house i will probably have an attack or something of that sort, then that will show you that something is not okay. And also feedback. Feedback is something that is very important. If people around you tell you that they're looking at you and something is not okay with you, then I think you should take a seat back and analyze why are these people actually telling me that there is a change in me? My mood is low. Um, I'm probably not as... Um, outspoken as I used to be. So those are some of the things that can be able to tell you as an and and there are also others that are just broad like if you're now hearing voices or seeing things, mm. things that we call hallucination, you'll say you'll be seeing things that other people can't see or you're hearing someone talking to you yet people around you cannot see. So those are some of the things that can actually tell you that something needs to be checked yeah all right um we have like three minutes to go i want us to go a bit faster because there are things i will uh would, i would like us to talk about before we leave this particular conversation uh pending for the next conversation that is to come um 
let's talk about diagnosis for uh, a minute or so. Um, what, are, what are some of the things you offer as 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 as, as, as diagnosis, a way of identifying the the kind of the the type of of mental illness that one has, and how do you cure maybe a few types? Let's talk about maybe um, two types that you've mentioned and how you actually offer remedy to that particular problem. Mm -hmm. So for us to come up with a diagnosis or for me to come up with a diagnosis, first and foremost, I must sit down with an individual for a long time. It is not something that you just look at someone and say, yo, you're depressed or you have anxiety. So you, I have to sit down, listen to you carefully uh, what is happening? What are the chief complaints that you're presenting with? And for how long have you been experiencing this? Another thing that I have to do is look at various risk factors. For example, is genetics involved? Um, are you taking substances or were you taking substances previously? Uh, have you lost a loved one? Have you lost your job? So such kind of things will enable us know what someone is going through. And then we have different screening tools that help us as psychologists to also just verify that indeed this person has depression or this person has anxiety or this person has an eating disorder. So after taking a thorough clinical history, as we call it, then I will run also those uh, tests and then be able to verify that indeed this person has depression. Like for depression, we have what we call Beck's depression inventory, which we use as psychologists, which I also use to just, um, you know, fill in the fears that this is what I thought this person had, but then they indeed have it. So these questionnaires are self-administered, yeah? So how do we cure it? We have got various techniques that we use as therapists, or that I use, uh, like we have what we call cognitive behavioral therapy. So once an individual comes in and says that they have depression, then depression comes in with a lot of negative thinking. An individual feels that they are not worth it. They develop a sense of low self-esteem. They feel like they want to end their lives. So the cognitive behavioral therapy technique is basically used to change an individual cognition, which in turn changes how they behave towards themselves or even other people. Also, family support is very, very essential and important. In as much as we do um, the one-on-one -on -one therapy session, we also try as much as possible to involve loved ones because we know human beings are social beings. Mm -hmm. And so with the aid of a good support system, an individual can greatly come out of a mental illness and thrive and even know how best to cope and deal with these life challenges. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. As we wind up, 30 seconds. We, I'll make a reference to another disease that greatly affected the world, COVID-19. We had to put up centers everywhere to make sure we combat it from every side of the world that there can be. Let's, let's, let's bring it home. Let's come to Kenya and talk about mental illness. Do we have enough facilities? Do we have enough centers all over the country to tackle this problem? And if not, what can we do? Are we still on the journey to that? Or do we have a long, long way to go? Oh, let me begin by saying that we don't have a long, long way to go because I feel that the government is uh, doing a lot of sensitization. But at the same time, we have private facilities. Personally, I work at a private facility in Upper Hill called the Nairobi Mental Health Services. And as well as Doctors Live Kenya, which is an online platform that offer mental health services. So uh, we are not far off as a country, but at the same time, what can be done is we can still do a lot of you know, sensitization. And we can also still talk to the government to create more facilities. Uh, one facilities that is greatly like identified with mental health is Madare. And when people hear the name Madare, a lot of stigma comes in and all that. So if we have various institutions and at least in each and every referral hospital, then 
we stand at a high chance of curbing mental health issues. So I think what can be done is just a lot. And what we are doing right now, I think also sensitization comes a long way. Back to you, Muteki. All right. Thank you so much for joining us in this particular conversation. Thank you for shedding more light on mental health. We're looking forward to have more conversations with you and your colleagues as we continue to push this agenda of mental health, even beyond the month of May. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you as well, Mutegi. All right, that is Claire Omolo. That is the cons he's a, she's a, a cons consultant psychologist joining us to talk about psychology and psychiatry and mental illness, mental health, those terms that you hear, but basically you're talking about mental health and seeing how we can actually be able to shape our future by making sure that as many people as possible are mentally fit. We'll now take a very slight break. We'll be coming back with more. Keep it here. Alright, we come back with more updates on the Shakahola incidents where 30 autopsies have been done and in, that is in particular uh, in, 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 in regard to the Shakahola massacre, 30 autopsies have been done on those particular bodies and uh, that is 22 adults, 7 children and 1 identified and the samples of DNA and toxicology analyses were taken as that particular uh, 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 activity was done. Take a look. Let's move over to Machakos, where Zimiola Umoja leader Raila Odinga was there, reiterating his commitment to end the alleged mishandling of the election process in Kenya. While speaking in Yata today, Odinga accused Kenya Kwanzaa government of rigging the August 2022 presidential election, vowing that there will be no peace until such malpractice comes to an end. The leader of Zimiola Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party, Raila Odinga, has once again emphasized the urgent need to address the issues of election rigging in Kenya. Speaking in Nyata Machakos County, Udinga accused the Kenya Kwanzaa government of rigging the presidential polls in August 2022, vowing that such malpractice will not be tolerated again. Udinga stressed that in order for Kenya to achieve lasting peace and progress, it is essential to ensure free and fair election for all citizens. He pledged that, the opposition would hold the President William Ruto-led regime accountable and work towards transparency in the agencies responsible for conducting the electoral process. Odinga, who claims to have defeated President Ruto in 2022 polls, questioned the conduct of Chief Justice Martha Kome, accusing her of unfairness in delivering the Supreme Court verdict on the election petition. Odinga was in a company of Kalonzo Musioka, Martha Karua, among other Azimio leaders who attended an event organized by Wiper Party, Patrick Odor, KUTV. Let's move beyond our borders and, and the fighting in Sudan has destroyed hospitals and medical care in the country. And patients who fled the conflict are desperate for treatment. In the absence of medical aid, a Sudanese pharmacist who fled Sudan in recent weeks is doing what he can to help other refugees at a camp in neighboring Chad. Henry Wilkins reports from Kofon, Chad. A month ago, Mohammed Adam gathered what medicine he could when he heard the Janjaweed, an armed group known for killing civilians, was about to storm his hometown of Tendelti in West Darfur. He says he loaded the medicine on a horse-drawn cart and rode the kilometer or so across the border to neighboring Chad. 
Since then, he has set up a makeshift pharmacy in Kufrun, a refugee site where about 10,000 people live. Mostly, now we need help with items for children because they are getting sick with infections, diarrhea, coughing, and especially there are problems with measles. It's mostly children who are our patients. He says he pays for the medicine his patients receive himself. Medina Ahmed Ishak has just arrived at the pharmacy seeking treatment for her baby, Abdul Razak. My child is sick with malaria and has diarrhea. Any food we had to eat is gone, so now I don't have enough. I pray that my son becomes a doctor one day. Since Sudan's conflict began on April 15th, Chad and aid groups have struggled to provide enough food for refugees to eat. Medical aid is scarce too, according to refugees. Inside Sudan, the healthcare system has all but collapsed. This video purports to show a hospital in Khartoum gutted by the fighting. Others in the city are said to have been severely damaged, along with hospitals in West Darfur, where much fighting has taken place. The medical non-profit Doctors Without Borders said Tuesday that its medical facilities had been looted, while a staff member had already been killed in April in the fighting. It says the looting will have life-ending consequences for the Sudanese people. Amir Eltom is the Assistant Secretary General of the Sudanese American Physicians Association. He says with the Sudanese government not functioning because of the fighting, his organisation is helping fund the running of some hospitals. A week-long ceasefire that began Monday should allow some medical aid to enter the country. Some of the hospitals that have been um, shut down for various reasons are um, the largest in, in Sudan. Some of the tertiary hospitals that other states um, referred to. Basically, the, the, really, the fighting has to, to, to stop. Otherwise, uh, catastrophe, one catastrophe after the other in, in different or various fields of medicine will, will, will ensue. Adam says refugees need more help from the international community, however. First, I ask all non-profits and local communities to help the refugees because they really need it. They have no place to protect them from rain, which helps spread diseases. We are concerned about the spread of cholera, which could turn into an epidemic. It will be a catastrophe. He says he's doing what he can with what little he has. Henry Wilkins for VOA News, Kufrun, Chad. And still in international news, the United States and South Korea are kicking off three weeks of massive military drills. The move is part of a show of force against North Korea, which has accelerated its own missile launches. More from VOA's Bill Gallo, who reports from Pochion, South Korea, near the demilitarized zone. Peace through overwhelming strength. That's the message from South Korea's military as its weapons pound a mountainside not far from the border with North Korea. This is the biggest live fire exercise the United States and South Korea have ever held, having become much more comfortable showing off their weapons in recent months. The South Korean military is calling this an annihilation drill. They've invited dozens of journalists and hundreds of spectators, and it seems clear that the audience is in both North and South Korea. For years, drills like this were held away from the public eye. Now, hundreds of civilians are invited to watch the show. It's a message of reassurance for South Koreans, says analyst Wong Young Sheik. To uh, provide a visible evidence to the eyes of the South Korean public who uh, have not seen the joint military exercises uh, for the past five years. The drills were scaled back during peace negotiations in 2018. When those talks broke down, North Korea started launching more missiles than ever. New leaders in Washington and Seoul have now decided on a tougher approach. Based upon the disappointing uh, result for the past five years, South Korea and the United States reached the conclusion that only uh, muscles would make North Koreans to think twice. That hasn't stopped North Korea from building better weapons and issuing more threats. Kim recently vowed to launch a spy satellite and may conduct a nuclear test. South Korea and the United States say they will also continue their drills, meaning the Korean Peninsula likely will not be quiet anytime soon. 
Bill Gallo, BOA News, Pochong, South Korea. All right, that brings us to the end of our international news segment. We take a very short break right here on KUTV Primetime News. Sports News up next. Technology. Science, Innovation, ICT and Research. These are the ingredients upon which the solutions to the 21st century problems are founded. In a world that is rapidly changing, it's all hands on deck to ensure a balance in all fields of life. young and old are also in the front line, breaking the glass ceiling, becoming thought leaders in the larger tech space. Not forgetting other societies marginalized. And when the tech Avengers come together, we inch closer to a much safer, efficient and sustainable world. What we view as a norm in today's advanced world was just an idea. And for nostalgic reasons, we trace back the iconic days to bring you the retro tech. On Tech Innovation Show, we encapsulate all the pillars of the fourth industrial revolution, decoded in a language, all for one, one for all. Every Monday at 8.30 as we push the mantra, keep learning something new each and every day. Only on KUTV, a new experience. Focus on Health is a show that creates awareness on matters health and informs you on various diseases, their causes, treatment, prevention, coping and support. So join me, Bari Michelle, every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. only on KUTV. You can also follow us on our social media platforms at KUTV Focus on Health on Facebook and also on YouTube and Health Focus on, on Instagram because your health is your world. Stay safe and stay healthy. <music> Welcome back. Moses tells me the league is coming to an end. The fun is over. So he's just asking me what he's going to be doing in the weekends. And I have no clue what he, how he feels, rather. Gormahia tactician Jonathan McKinstry is optimistic of a positive result ahead of Sunday clash with league's leaders Tasca FC at Nyayov Stadium. Tasca sits top of the Premier League table with 64 points, one ahead of second place to Kogalo, and a win for either team will boost their title credential with only four matches remaining before the conclusion of the 2022-2023 season. Gore won the first leg 2-1 at the Kasarani Stadium and they will be keen to win this particular one as well. We are on top of the league right now, so this is something that uh, will keep us pushing. Uh, we are just right now, we're just looking for the, for the Sunday game. Uh, of which we are all motivated to win the game so that we maintain our our log. Of course, we are all confident because you know what it means by being on top, on top, on top of the league. So it keeps us motivated. We are pushing and uh, we just, we're just all happy and we want also to, to win the Sunday game so that we all be happy more and more. We want to pick it out of, we want to take the Mozart bet and the league so that we all enjoy the season well. That is what we all need right now. Uh. Let's go to EPL where Manchester United reigned supreme over struggling Chelsea in the